Welcome to Indie Spotlight Radio, where we shine a light on independent artists and their unique stories. I am thrilled to share with you and an interview was originally aired on my previous podcast, Celebrity Spotlight Radio, about a special documentary called Lost Angel, The Genius of Judy Sill. The interview was outstanding and features filmmakers Andy Brown and Brian Lindstrom. What was exciting was that this documentary had its world premiere at the Doc New York City 2022 on November 13, 2022 at SVA Theater. In the light of this news, I decided to rebroadcast this interview on my YouTube channel, Indie Spotlight Radio, because it fits perfectly with the premise of the show. For those who may not know, Lost Angel, the genius of Judy Sill, is a compelling story of a single songwriter, Judy Sill, who was ahead of her time and her unique musical legacy. The film has also been selected to play at the Sarasota Film Festival, and you'll find the link to the film on their website and in the description below. I invite you to join me in this conversation about a remarkable artist and filmmaker duo who have brought her story to life. Tune in to Indie Spotlight Radio, and let's celebrate independent voices together. And today I have two special guests that took upon a journey to give light to a one-of-a-kind singer-songwriter from the 1970s, Judy Sill. This intimate documentary portrait entitled Lost Angel, the genius of Judith Sill will have its world premiere at Doc NYC 2022 on Sunday, November 13th. Welcome, director Andy Brown and Brian Lindstrom to the show. What a movie, I tell you. You brought me back great memories for me. Oh, really? terrific. Oh, yeah. that's great. You did. I like to start out with the title because the title was just uh, amazing. And uh, it actually uh, what led me to see the film, you know, and of course the songwriter, and I'll tell you why uh, later on. Um, I like to start with that. Um, how did you come up with the title of the film? The film had a different title originally. It was called Soldier of the Heart. And we felt it wasn't quite descriptive enough of the film itself. And Judy had this struggle between the dark and the light side in her life, which she was very open about <clears throat> and which she created music to help heal other people who had that same struggle. And we feel that mission in a way was more on the angelic side than the demonic side, even though she herself had that struggle. And then of course, there's the play on LA, Los Angel, LA, which is where she was born and died. And LA is very much a part of her story. So that had, that we like that part of it too. Yeah, yeah. And we also uh, wanted a title that would give the permission, the audience permission to not know who Judy was, you know, and Lost Angel does that. It's like the audience can come into it not feeling like they have to know who she is. Right, right. And actually it's a great title because either way, um, I knew who she was. Oh, yeah. I was actually in high school at the time in 1979 and, we lost 26 consecutive games in football. And in October, when she died, my brother, who was a senior at the time, we won that one game. We won the first game ever. And then he came up to me and he said, uh, you're not going to believe this, but Judy, you, you, Judith uh, still died. And he was so bummed about it because it was like, happened at the same time we won he we, he we lost all these games you know and we won this you know we finally won and then all of a sudden my brother was like blown away from it my sister who followed rock and roll all her life you know even to this day remembers her you know where and, where, where were you, where was this 
uh, New Jersey, Old Tapan in New Jersey. And wow. I'm, I'm just stunned that he would it, know that Judy had died because it, well, there was no obit and... No, well, he knew that... Well, what happened was in those days, there was this guy named Chip Peeler and he, he knew everything about rock and roll. A matter of fact, he came in with, you know, the, the wall t-shirt. <laughs> he came in and everybody's like, what the hell? What, what is that? You know, we didn't even know what the wall was with Pink Floyd, you know? And he actually knew everything about everyone in, when it came to rock and roll and songwriters. He was in tune to it. So he would spread all these messages throughout the school, period. So I don't know how my brother knew, never asked him. My, my sister knew, I guess, through, I don't know, from colleagues, friends, I don't know. But she died, and I remember when she died. It might have not been the same day, but I remember that when we won, you know, he was very upset by it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I'm very intrigued. You know, I want to know how long did it take to gather all this amazing information in order to do this film? Nine years. Wow. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I gather that it must have been, like, difficult, no? Because... You have to get the, A, you have to get the story right, you yeah. know? And there's a lot of emotions going through here, you know, because I didn't, I never remember for myself, I was, what, 15 at the time, I guess, when she passed away. So I didn't really, you know, follow her music until later on, you know, like a lot of people did, you know, even to this day, we did. Um the movie opened up my heart. It really did. What inspired you both to tell this story? Well, our entry point into Judy was what a lot of people's our entry point is, which is that KISS video from the Old Grey Whistle Test um, that's on YouTube. So when I saw it and then showed it to Brian a little bit after that this is nine years ago right um brian was uh a, a, had just finished a documentary and a, a friend had said to him hey you know you should make your next documentary about judy sill assuming brian wouldn't have known who she was but he did because i just showed him this video of her and that you know just based on our uh being so slayed by that video that was enough to get us started. And the next day after Brian told me his friend had said this, um, I was on the phone with uh, uh, Judy's, um, the, the widow of Judy's nephew. And that began the process. Um, and pretty soon after that, within a few months, we started inter interviewing people. But you're right, it took a long time. Uh, we did not get her personal archives until about four or five years into the process, nor did we get the audio tape that allowed us to have Judy tell her own story until about four or five years after we started. So if you're going to approach a documentary, I think you have to think of it as a biographer and you have to try and get us all the material that you can find. And, yeah. you know, COVID slowed us down probably a little bit too, but we were able to edit and in, a, in in some ways, I think it's good that it took this time, that amount of time, so we were able to get everything. Um, yeah, you brought need. out you you brought out in the film, you brought a lot of emotions, you know, and and I'm pretty sure that a lot of people that uh, didn't know her are going to know her through this film. I, we I'm, hope so. I I I'm pretty <laughs> sure they will, because I was really taken by it. Um, I know there were a lot of emotions between you two doing this film. Um, what was the toughest scene to shoot um, in the interviews and, and so on? What was the toughest for you because you're connected with her in a way? I would say probably the journal entries that really uh, just so vividly and brutally, honestly, share 
just the depths of her struggles with addiction, you know, and to see the pain she was in. And then also uh, the relationship she had with David Bearden, you know, and how she kind of beat herself up over a lot of his behaviors. Um, but what's so fascinating about Judy is that even with all that darkness and all that pain, the, the main thing I take away from her is kind of light and inspiration, you know, because she took all of that and crafted it into this music that still touches us so deeply today. Your question makes me think though of an interview we did, and this is not in the film, but the pain and trauma Judy went through was so intense, not just the struggle with addiction, but all that happened in her early life, and probably was sexually assaulted by a family member and all this terrible trauma. We were interviewing Adrienne Lenker of Big Thief, and she broke down crying, talking about it, because she suddenly got in touch with how horrific so much of what Judy was contending with was. We did decide not to put it in the film. It just didn't work, but, and, but it was very intense experience for all of us to see that. Yeah. And it was so much about her responding to Judy as a person and what she was trying to do as a musician, which is very similar to what Adrienne is trying to do, drawing from the same musical ether. Um, so it just reminded me of that, your question. I know that she always in the film always mentioned that she wanted to make it big. She wanted to become a star. You know, you think that was a downfall of hers that um, actually also like a struggle through that because she was always opening for rock bands and stuff like that. And I think she felt a little like, wow, I, I just want to do it on my own. I want to open up for me and not open up for anybody else. You think that was part of her struggles too? I'm, I'm sure it was. I mean, what's so fascinating about Judy is as much as she wanted to be a big star, uh, we don't have any evidence in any of her journals or talking to other people that she ever did anything musically that she did not absolutely want to do and believe in 100%. You know, it wasn't like she was trying to write the next... Um, you know, me and you and a dog named Boo. I mean, she, you know, was truly an artist and never compromised in any way. Uh, but I think she also knew that she just had a, an incredible gift. And as Adrian Linker says in the film, you know, um, what must it be like to, you know, make this music with all your heart and to give it out there? And is that not enough? You know? Yeah, you had a lot of people uh, that were featured, Linda Ronstadt, Jackson Brown, and many others. Um, how was the whole process? Um, were they like jump to the interviews? Like, uh, were they like all positive about it? Oh yeah, definitely. Or was it a struggle to get them to interview? Was it an easy thing or a hard process? The only struggle was really one of schedules. I mean, they were to a, a person just really uh, selfless and committed to this idea of bringing Judy to a wider audience than she ever experienced in her lifetime. You know, and they really went out of their way to to share with us so that we could do that. Yep. Very yeah. enthusiastic, I'd say. Yeah. The reason why I asked that is because during the interview, I could see the emotions in them about her. You could see all her friends just loved her i mean this the sort of wikipedia version of judy is this dark gloomy figure it's just not true and she was funny and and loved to take her friends out to dinner and this is to the end while she was really struggling with drugs she she was still writing songs in her journal she was still you know trying to find a positive take on everything that despite everything that was happening so people love her friends deeply miss her because the loss was so big because she was such a fun person to have in their lives. Yeah. You know, when you look at her picture, she looked so beautifully, so together. And when you hear her music, her words, you are hypnotized in a realm of beauty that it's hard to believe that she was struggling through her own demons. 
It really is. I mean, watching your film and and the the, the little you know footage that you have of her, she shows no signs whatsoever of that. And you know, I wonder. I always wonder, like Robin Williams, he used comedy, and nobody ever knew he was struggling. You know, she wrote music. It was a way of hiding that, I think. Do you think that's possible? I think she used music to save herself, and right. she created music to help other people be healed. And that was her mission. And she was only able to do that because she was so consumed by the opposite. <laughs> and 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 one had you can't separate one from you know the the, the darkness is how she created the lightness right in her right. case for sure i mean as she says writes in her journal you know her goal with music is to achieve the union you know with god right and i was i was curious when i was watching the film the journal that's a true journal correct yeah it's her writing her. wow yeah, yeah. that's, that's truly amazing that changed everything for us because we were able like i said to tell her have her tell her own story and especially in that last period of her life which was sort of no people didn't know much about or we didn't know much about it filled in everything because it took place the journals take place from around 73 4 to 79 when she passed so it allowed us to be able to tell her whole life story in yeah. her words. You know, I was friends with AJ Perro, the drummer to Swiss, Twisted Sister, who passed away uh, years ago. Um, he passed away in a tour bus. Uh, uh, I remember that. Yeah, he had heart disease. Mm -hmm. and I met him a long time ago, and I actually, he was into acting, and I got him into a short film that he did great in. We never released the film in respect to, you know, the family and stuff. But, um, he told me stories about the 80s, you know, the drugs and so on. Uh, yet he was clean for many, many years. But I guess, you know, he told me that playing the drums was um, for him a release of that pain and agony that he had all those years, you know. And he was, man, he was healthy. He was into the martial arts, doing all this ex doing you know his drumming what he loved and then he never went to the doctor and checked himself out <laughs> and the rest was history you know and you wonder about people you know it, it was a different time which also you got to understand where she came from you know yeah. the 70s and the 80s i remember i grew up in the 80s you know eventually i went to new york and grew up in washington heights which was like the drug capital of the universe you know yeah. and and it was horrible. It was horrible. It was either you do drugs, uh, or hopefully you get out of that neighborhood and, and do something for yourself. Luckily, I survived that. And I never, ever touched the stuff, you know? And um, it just is, you guys did this film. Um, can you tell me, can you tell the audience, what message would you like to send to everyone watching this film one thing i would say is that and, and you just touched on it, is that the resources to get help in the 70s was not what they are now and so people can luckily get effective medical treatment and for addiction and so on and 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 have it identified and 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 effectively helped um but the other thing is that she didn't give up, that she kept trying despite all the bad luck, the physical pain she was in, and then the struggle with um, drugs at the end of her life where she still was writing songs. So that as tragic as her life was in a way, there was really in her attempt to the very end to transcend all that was still there. So she tried, she didn't make it, 
she had, you know, took too much one night. I don't believe she was trying to die. Yeah. And she, but I think the message would be ride the wave and get to the other side if you can. And she tried, and she was trying to help people feel that way in her music. In her music, right. I get that same feeling. Yeah, she was a blessing. You guys are a blessing too. Oh, you both, thank you. Uh, yeah. thank you. you know, uh, I would say that, uh, that Judy's, uh, you know, the last words she sings in the film are however we are is okay. And um, I, I think that's, there's a lot of uh, comfort and inspiration in that idea. And it doesn't mean that like we don't try to uh, overcome our challenges like addiction or whatever. What it, we, what it means is that we accept ourselves on a deep level. And through that acceptance, we're given energy and inspiration to overcome things, you know? And I think Judy is all about overcoming things. There's no way to, to spend time with her like Andy and I have the last nine years and not come out of it with, uh, with what she wrote in her journal, onwards and upwards, F the odds, you know? Right, not depressed by her story, but inspired by it personally. Yeah. That's what I get. I was very inspired by it. Oh, good. You know, and I'm I'm pretty sure everybody's going to be inspired, and that's why I asked you that question about the message because you're right. I think it's very important that people just, you know, seek help, and yep. you know, not like her or Robin Williams where they mm -hmm. cover themselves uh, with their talent. You know, and God bless for this movie. God bless you too, and you. congratulations. And again, so remember November thirteenth. Okay, because the world premiere, you can't miss it. So it's a Doc NYC 2022. So see you all there. Good luck.